Welcome to Speaking of Schaumburg. I'm Village President Al Larson. In this episode, we'll be joined by Angela Walsh to learn about holiday fire safety tips. Then we'll talk to Dave Laurie from the Engineering and Public Works Department. We'll close out the program by speaking with Rob Palekas from the Prairie Center for the Arts. All of this and more today here on Speaking of Schaumburg. During the holiday season, fire prevention is an important issue to keep in mind when decorating and celebrating. Angela Walsh from the Fire Department is here to tell us about fire safety tips. Welcome to Speaking of Chamber Thank Angela. you for having me. Well, tell me what you do here to, with the Fire Department. So I am the Public Education and Information Officer, so I'm fortunate enough to be able to interact with the residents of Schaumburg through community events, um, the older adult programs that we run, as well as the school program. So I go into the elementary schools here in Schaumburg and I teach the kids the Fire and Life Safety Program. What do you, what do, you do besides that? Um, <laughs> quite a few. Um, I also help with um, the fire evacuations that we run in the high rises here in Schaumburg. Well, and yeah, tell me about that. Okay, so um, each high rise has fire wardens who are the people on the particular floor who are responsible for taking into account um, those on their, in their space who maybe need to stay in the stairwell during an evacuation, they are not able to navigate the stairs. Um, and they are also responsible for forwarding that kind of information to um, the fire department when there's a real emergency. So we have a training for those fire wardens so that they are prepared and understand what their role is in a emergency situation. And they're volunteers then, aren't they? They are, yeah. Tell me about the educational programs in schools. Yeah, it's wonderful. Um, I have an education background, so I used to teach. So I enjoy going to the schools and we visit with the kindergarten, actually preschools as well, but the kindergarten through fourth grade um, in the Schaumburg schools and the two private schools we have here in Schaumburg. And um, we go through several different topics like um, making a fire evacuation plan with your family, testing smoke alarms around the house. For the little ones, it's how to avoid burns, um, things that they should never touch around the house. With the third grade classes, we're talking this year about electrical hazards around the house. So I talk to them about um, looking around the house with their families for overloaded outlets, which comes into play with the holiday season as well. Sure. Um, we talk about evacuation plans with the family. We talk about um, the fire triangle, which is the three elements that are needed in order for a fire to start. And Heat, they are? Fuel and oxygen. And okay. we talk about how removing one of those elements would put the fire out. So they kind of understand a, the science behind a fire. Mm -hmm. um, and we also talk about calling 911 and the information that the 911 dispatcher is going to need to know from them. Um, what kind of so questions do you get from, from let's say, a third grade, th third grade class? Um, they'll ask, a lot of times they'll ask questions like, you know, what if I can't go out my door, but I can't get out my window and there's a fire? You know, they have very, um, a lot of concerns with being sure. stuck. So we talk about having a safe meeting place outside their house with their family so their family knows if everyone gets out okay and they can relay that information to the fire department. And also I always let them know that the fire department is going to check every single area in that house. How did you get to be a, a fire safety officer? How did you get to, you know? Well, like I said, I have an education background. Okay. So I was at a point where I was kind of looking for a new challenge and the fire department was looking for someone with an education background and teaching experience. Okay. I suspect there's, there's a difference be, be, between how you teach with the kids and how you teach with, with adults or, right. or, or, or seniors. Yeah. Uh, how, do you, how do you adjust your, your presentation Well, that's what's nice, I th and I think that's why the fire department was looking for someone with an education background. So um, I do feel comfortable um, adjusting to the little kids or um, middle school kids. I've seen them from time to time too and the um, older adults. What, what kind of questions do you get from, from, the, from the older adults? Um, a lot of questions about smoke alarms and um, what, what needs to be done around the house to, you know, decluttering, um, making sure they have um, night lights and things like that so that they're able to get around at night. We actually do have a new program um, for the older adults. It's actually a home safety visit. Okay. So that's something that we're starting with Explain the Explain that to me. So that is basically if you're interested, you can call the fire department and set up an appointment and the on-duty crew, whichever whichever still district you're in, the on-duty crew will come to your house when, at a scheduled time and go through the house with you and look for fire hazards and things in particular that you need to be looking out for. You're still fleshing out the program, though. For uh, yeah, it's a, it's a relatively new program, so it'll be really in full force after the first of the year. Okay. Yeah. How do you allocate your time in terms of of kids and adults and? Um, well, the schools are, are what take up most of the time because we do have so many schools here in Schaumburg. Um, so I start scheduling in the summer 
with the teachers and the principals and um, the high-rise evacuations typically are in the fall and the schools are often map testing in September so that works out so I go into the high-rises during that time and it seems to work out. Is what, what you do similar to what other other uh, towns do for uh, in terms of, of, of education? I believe so. I think I know some some towns, some schools have to do um, like um, larger groups. But for me, I'm fortunate enough that the teachers welcome me and they're happy to have me in their particular class. How long does it take for a session? Probably about 35 minutes. I take about 35 minutes, and their schedules are very tight, so I do appreciate their time. Okay. And then you get question and answer, of course, and you yeah. get the kids. Yeah. What's, the, what's, the, what's the major concern exp expressed by seniors? Um, I would just say making sure that they um, know how that they know how to get out safely of their house if there's a so fire. So basically, it's the same as the kids. It is, yeah, it really is. I mean, a lot yeah, of everyone's yeah. concerns kind of relate to the same thing: being being able to get out safely if there's ever a fire. Okay. So. And you, you do this how many times a week? Um, typically, I mean, I see this in the schools almost, I'm in the schools almost every day. Okay. Um, and then the older adult program, I visit the barn like every other month. Okay. And the... Friendship Village, do you, do you ever get in there? I've been in there before and we're kind of trying to work on setting up more time to get in there as well. Okay. So, like I said, I'm relatively new, so I'm still kind of evolving my program, which is nice. Okay. So, I enjoy right. that. This holiday season, I imagine you're, you're busier this season and then, let's say, during the summer. Yeah, the holiday season is, um, is a busy time and there are a lot of hazards that we want people to look out for um, while they're decorating and while they're getting ready for the holiday season. In particular, um, if, if residents are buying a fresh Christmas tree, we want them to make sure to look for needles that are you know, fresh and not falling off. If you're looking at the trees and the needles are already starting to fall off, you want to avoid that tree. It's starting to dry out already. And when you bring the tree home, make sure that it's in the stand and is watered consistently. A dry tree is much more of a hazard, obviously, than a, a hydrated tree. So we want to keep those trees um, water daily. And then um, also with lights, lights are a big hazard. The, the twinkle lights that we use around the house, around the tree, we want to make sure that those are rated for what you're using them for. So some are for indoor, outdoor, some are sure. specific to indoor. So we always want residents to look to make sure that what they're using is appropriate and that it's been tested by a laboratory like um, Underwriters Laboratory that says it's appropriate for that particular use. But also with um, candles too, candles are a hazard. We want to remind people to keep um, candles out of reach of kids and pets and to extinguish them when they leave the room. Also with the lights, the holiday lights around the tree and outside to, extinct, to turn those off before you go to bed or before you leave the house. Um, and also not to overload outlets, like I said, with the students in the classroom, we talk about that. We also, um, that's important for the residents of Schaumburg to remember too, not to overload those outlets when they're decorating. Sure. And you know, rule of thumb is about three strings of lights together. You don't wanna do too many. You don't wanna be in the position to have an overload or But it looks so overheat. much nicer with I know, it's, it's <laughs> tough, it's tough. But there's ways around it um, to be safe. And those are some, some important tips. Okay. You still like what you're doing? I do, I love it. I okay. love it. Well, that's great. Yeah. Thanks for being on the show. Thank you. Right. The winter season came early this year, but Schaumburg was ready for it. Learn how next on Speaking of Schaumburg. The season's first snow came in with a bang at the end of November. Here to tell us more about Schaumburg's winter operations and, and safety is Director of Engineering and Public Works, David Laurie. Well, welcome, welcome to Speaking of Schaumburg, Dave. Good morning, Mayor. Glad to be here. Tell me what, what, a, what a Director of Engineering and Public Works does Well, in the wintertime. In the wintertime. Well, we're focused mostly on snow and ice. And uh, as uh, you pointed out, the last weekend was uh, trial by fire. We got into the first snow season with a bang. Uh, Schaumburg had about 10 inches of snow and uh, we worked over four shifts between uh, starting Friday late afternoon into uh, Sunday. Uh, we ended about midday Sunday clearing the roads for the uh, village. Now they said it was going to be a mild winter. Is this uh Still hold no, true? I, I won't measure the entire season by one storm event, but uh, that's what they're still telling us. So we're holding out hope. Okay. All right. And how long have you been doing this as Director of Engineering and Public Works? I've been in Schaumburg uh, about a year and a half now. Okay. And uh, great, great place, great community. Where'd you come from, Dave? I came from Elgin. I was in Elgin doing the business uh, of public works for about 23 years before coming to Schaumburg. Okay. So we, we, we stole you away from Elgin? Uh, kind of, sort of. I left Elgin and then uh, went on the private side for a little bit, but uh, I couldn't stay away from public works. Tell us about back. the operations. Well, how does this kick in when, when, when you get wind, wind of a storm coming through? What do you guys do? Well, the first thing we do is we, we're 
constantly from the time we start. By the uh, last Friday of October, we have our snow and ice uh, inspection, and that's where all the equipment is inspected. It's uh, cleaned up. It's ready to go at that point. Uh, it's kind of an exercise, a little reward program that we do for the staff, whoever gets their equipment uh, done the best. But that helps us prepare for the event. And uh, so the equipment and everything ready to go at that point. Because as we found out, winter can come earlier than you like it to. Um, from the time we get the equipment ready, then as we, a storm is identified and it's forecasted, then we begin looking at, okay, what staffing is necessary? What equipment is gonna be needed? And how are we gonna respond? When are we gonna respond? And it all depends on the timing of the storm, of course. Uh, trucks are uh, loaded with salt. They're parked in the garage, so they're ready to go. We have plenty of salt this year, don't we? We got, we got 7,000 tons of salt on hand. We have everything we need for the season, if the season uh, treats us well. But uh, then okay. we have another contract for another 2,000 we can purchase if necessary during okay. the course of the year. Right. And uh, so then the equipment's ready to go, and then uh, once the reports come in that the snow is coming, then we, we put the, the drivers out on the street with the trucks. Generally, you're going to start out as a salting, or uh, some salting, getting some product down, so as the snow hits the pavement, it doesn't bond to the pavement. And we use some of our liquids to help us with that. And then we, uh, as the snow accumulates, then we begin the plowing operation. Cul-de-sacs are handled separately. Cul-de-sacs are handled by our contractor. Plody is our contract to get. How do you year. coordinate that be between public be between public works people and, and and the private contractor? You know, how do you do that so that you don't end up with everything being plowed and you got a couple of lonely cul-de-sacs out there? Well, the, the cul-de-sacs are the the contractor's paid per per push in a cul-de-sac. So okay. every time he shows up to plow a cul-de-sac, he gets paid for that. So we try to time it so that we don't have to waste his time necessarily and pay more, and at the same time be responsive to the residents that live on those cul-de-sacs. So in this last storm, as an example, we didn't call him out until uh, Saturday morning, uh, about eight o'clock. By that time, we had about four inches on the ground and he started plowing. And because of the length of the storm, we did end up pushing twice with him during that storm. But we tried to time it so that they can still drive if they have to, but at the same time, not bring him out any more than necessary. Once the cul-de-sacs are then plowed, uh, the village crews go back into Salton at that point. Now, it's just something called Snow Command, isn't there? Yes. Uh, yes. Explain that to me. Snow Command is the, that's the, the nerve center of the operation. Uh, anybody who wants to contact Snow Command during the course of an event, just dial 311, real simple, and then that, in turn, uh, 311 will forward those calls on to Snow Command as necessary, or take messages and, and, and uh, relay those uh, messages to Snow Command. But it's staffed by one foreman, and then there's two other foremen who are on duty at the same time. They're out on the street managing the crews and the contractors out on the street. And so you said four shifts. You, you, you said, yeah, we will work a shift. Generally, we work try to work a 12-hour shift, no more, because we don't want to burn the guys out. We want guys fresh on the street and, and cognitive on the street. And then uh, so we'll work 12 on, 12 off during a, a longer-term event. The start and end of a, an event you might have, a, they'll be shortened only because we want to get to a point where we can start the 12 hour shifts and at the same time, we're not going to work a 12 hour shift on the back end if we only need four hours to finish it up as an example. Now, so some, somebody's driveway is not, it's not, is blocked off by either a, a, a snow plow from the village or, or, or from our private contractor. What should, what should a resident do about well, that? Typically, any snow operation is going to leave a little bit. It's going to leave that windrow of snow at the end of your driveway. Sure. And we, 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 we want the uh, individual property owners to manage that as much as they can. If they think that there's an unfair or undue accumulation at the end, sure. call 311. We'll send a foreman out and take a look at it. And if it was something uh, unique or, or otherwise uh, troubling, we'll go ahead and clear that out for them. Now, you, you have people, uh, do you, do you hire people part-time also for, for these snow, snow events? Correct, correct. We have 55 staff, full-time staff, that we apply to our part of Snow Command to this, our, our response to a snow operation. There's 25 supplemental drivers we engage every winter as well that we use to, uh, to support our own. Because at any given time, you have part of that 55, especially over holidays and whatnot, are going to be off. They're going to, they might be sick sure. or they might have personal days. So we use the supplemental staff to support that. So we always have a full complement of staff Where do you get the, the supplemental staff from? We advertise. We advertise out uh, through, through uh, the website and people apply. People that apply that have daytime or nighttime, they sometimes they place conditions. Some of them are unemployed. I mean, for anything. construction uh, area construction, exactly. yields some people. Yep. We even we do uh, allow in-house too as well. It's a different pay rate. But we have police and fire personnel. We have other uh, uh, engineering personnel that uh, will participate in really? the event as well. 
How many of those do you, do you typically have? In a Maybe six okay. at any given time. But there's there's a couple. We've got one of our uh, public works staff persons, uh, logistics coordinator. He he volunteers. So in those nighttime opportunities, uh, he can plow again different rate. He's not paid his full rate for that. He's pulled it, paid a different rate. And we have a couple uh, consistent police and fire personnel as well that join the group. And they come back every year, I would imagine. Yes. 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 On call. Yeah. And they're not always available all the time, but we have, that's why we want to have 25 so that we have a group we can pick from. The real challenge is giving them enough work to keep them interested because if we have a light winter, yeah. you know, they might have other activities that they're involved in or they might find other part-time work that they're doing instead. Now, what do you do when folks call up and say that, that, you know, that we're not, you're not plowing Schaumburg Road as well as you should? You're not plowing Plum Grove Road as well as you should? We never. You're, you're, not, you're, not, you're not plowing Gulf Road as well as you should? Well, we, we indicate to them... Uh, there's two ways that's managed. Uh, first of all, all the roads you mentioned are not Schomburg roads. Um, and uh, nobody ever calls about the condition of our roads, by the way. They're always done well. But uh, yeah, but Schomburg, Plum Grove, Golf. Uh, golf is IDOT. Part of Meacham. Part of Meacham. Yeah. The tollway, of course. Yeah. Um, Higgins Road. But these are all other jurisdictions. So, sure. And those are all listed on our website. So you can go to our website. You can see that list and you'll see who those other jurisdictions are. If you find that they're not to an acceptable condition, please call 311. We'll relay that message for the resident as well, for the, for the concerned citizen. Mm -hmm. But it's important to recognize that we don't plow those roads because we don't, you know, the, the tax money that everybody's paying sure. to support those is paid for sure. those as well. So we, we expect them to respond. So Wise Road, it depends upon where and why, you know, east, east of Roselle, it's, it's one. East of Roselle, it's Schomburg, Schom Village of Schomburg. Okay. West of Roselle, it's... Uh, the county's responsibility. Okay. And, and do, you, do you also plow the airport? We do plow the airport. And uh, airport takes special consideration because the, uh, the uh, anti-icing chemicals used out there have to be so that they uh, don't interfere with the uh, air, airline operations that work there. So we have special equipment that's out there and we, we staff that as well. Now it's staffed a little differently. The highest priority is still the streets. Sure. And we work closely with the uh, with the airport management out there to make sure that we, we're coordinating those activities. But we generally, the first response is the streets, and as we have people available, we'll send them out there to start start managing the airport. And now we have a manager at the airport. We do, we? we do. And Eric Eric has uh, already been in contact with our staff. We are already coordinating activities during this last event as well because they had a charter coming in Saturday morning. Okay. Well, from what I, I can tell, you guys have done a great job, you know, as, as always. Well, as, I appreciate as, that. Thank uh, you. And, uh, uh, my wife got a little concerned about a driveway being closed off, but <laughs> you got that taken care of. Yeah. The, the, the only other thing I'll mention for the public, if you want to help us out, and this came up uh, a couple different times during this last event, was fire hydrants. Ah, yes. And fire hydrants are always a, a problem for us because there's 3,600 fire hydrants approximately in the village. Sure. And it's not possible for staff to clear all those. It's, it's yeah. almost impossible given the resources we have and still trying to plow snow sure. and take care of other activities. Sure. Because it's not just plowing the streets. We also have crews out doing sidewalks, doing the com lot okay. out, okay. at, out at the ballpark. And so there's other responsibilities, all the various uh, yeah. uh, village facilities as well. So um, anything that the residents can do, if you see that it's blocked, I mean, and you can get out there and shovel it out. Please do so because you're helping us out. You're helping yourself out and your neighbors out as well when you do that. Right. Dave, thanks Appreciate for the information. Thanks for having me. I'll, I'll be calling. All right. All right. <laughs> Please do. The Prairie Center for the Arts will spark your holiday spirit this December. Learn more next here on Speaking of Schaumburg. Holiday shows are an annual tradition for many families. Here to tell us more about holiday events at the Prairie Center for the Arts is our own Rob Polekis. Welcome, Rob. Thanks for having me. Well, tell us about your, uh, your, your what you're doing. Oh, boy. Or, well, what, or what you're not doing. What I'm not doing. Well, I, I, it'd be or nice. Or what we to, should be doing. Well, what I should be doing is uh, is uh, getting ready for the holidays, and that's what we're doing. We have we have two great productions coming up. Uh, let's start off with the Nutcracker. Okay. It's, it's uh, been here since 1995. It's the Schomburg Dance Ensemble. Uh, it is, it Who's is in a, that dance ensemble? It is, it's, you know what? They are professional dancers, and we have students, and there are area adults who also perform in it in, in the party sequence. Uh, it's uh, it, it really is it, it's a true community production uh, that also gets top professional talent to perform in it as well. Um, like I said, tw over, you know, over 20 years now we've been going uh, with it. 
uh, 10 performances. Uh, it's a great show. It's, it's you mentioned professional. Show. How many of those? Two? We have, there are, there are probably around 10 professional dancers because the Nutcracker does have these, these uh, highlighted um, uh, segments where you have, where you have maybe uh, a, a lead uh, Russian dancer or the Sugar Plum Fairy is a very featured role. Uh, so, so we have people who have, you know, have prof you know, professional experience in, in playing parts like that. Uh, and uh, they're, they're great. I mean, it's, it's beautiful to watch them dance. And, and, and I think in turn, the students who are also in the production see them, and that, and that in turn makes them better dancers. Where do they come from? Performers. So uh, everywhere. We have, we have uh, of course, the Schomburg area, the suburbs all around the Schomburg area. We also have a north suburban cast from Libertyville, uh, Lake Zurich, all around there. So we're, we're covering uh, uh, the uh, west, north uh, suburbs, northwest suburbs, uh, uh, just, just a number of communities get involved in it. So it's a... Uh, um, so how, how many typically? Well, about 140 in the cast. Really? Huge. Huge. So we're not we're not talking like a, a little Schomburg production here. We're talking about a major production uh, that, that takes uh, talent from the greater Chicagoland area, and it's uh, it, it's beautiful. You know, it's it's fully costumed, and and uh, uh, and of course Tchaikovsky's music is uh, you know can't be beat. So it's wonderful. How long have you been doing this? How long have we been doing? Well, I've you know I, since I've been here, so uh, you know, 1995 was the first time we did it, uh, and and it just it just keeps getting better every year. We have know? auditions from dance schools. Don't we? They have we have auditions. We send out notices to all the area dance schools. We send audition notices. The professionals audition for their roles too. So uh, so you're, you're getting you know you're getting you know top tier people performing in this. Uh, so we get we get a lot of you know we obviously uh, we can't accept everyone because there are uh, um, uh, limitations is how many people you can have in the cast, but uh, they try to get as many people involved uh, to perform in this. And uh, <clears throat> and you have you have some you know you say ten 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 uh, uh, performances of uh, ten performances through a, for over two weekends starting on Friday December fourth. Yeah, so it's great from you, you get a lot of young girls too who. who who, who come in, uh, in, in. As a matter of fact, one of the professional dancers, uh, Jennifer Weisickle, uh, started doing it when she was 16 years old. I think she's been in the original Nutcracker. Uh, and so she started as a student and now works, uh, is in the company as a professional uh, performer. So uh, it, it's, it's really fun to watch them work their way up through the ranks. It's, it's really What amazing. else do you have to, to celebrate the holiday season? Well, I'll tell you what we have. We have uh, our, uh, our, our world-renowned Presto holiday concert. Presto, where did pre Presto come from? Where did Presto come from? Well, you presto know, Presto changeo. Presto, <laughs> yeah, it's a, kind of a Presto changeo. We, when when we first, this, this is the Schomburg Youth Symphony Orchestra, and uh, when we first started doing the Presto shows, they were. Um, well, it, well, well, first of all, tell me about the Schomburg Youth Orchestra. Well, the Youth Orchestra program has been around to, since 1989. It's it's a phenomenal program. Started out as a 16 member string ensemble, a little group area students from from third grade through high school and uh, and from there on it built up to a program that has four ensembles uh, it has a chamber program over uh, about 200 members in it right now uh, it is one of the most respected programs uh, in the area uh, along with the the Chicago Youth Symphony Orchestra uh, music uh, Midwest young artists uh, uh, the Elgin Youth Orchestra we are up there uh, at, with the same profile as them and they played uh, at the Symph Symphony Center too, and uh, we, we've they've They've performed twice at Symphony Center for the 20th and 25th anniversary. Uh, they've played alongside the uh, Elgin Symphony Orchestra, uh, and of course, they've performed all over the world. So, uh, we've we've been in uh, in Germany, Austria, Japan, France, England, Italy, Czech Republic, Hungary, uh, Austria, and Germany. I think I mentioned them all. I think so too. Yeah, and so it's been uh, so. So they've they've entertained audiences around the world, and they uh, absolutely entertain people here locally at the Prairie Center. So it's um, so the holiday concert. We get to have a little fun with that. It's it's obviously it's holiday music. Uh, we perform popular music. You know, Leroy Anderson's. Everyone loves Sleigh Ride. Uh, and then you have you have some more traditional. I've always wanted that, that, that crack of that whip. You know, that, that. I, I can talk to some people for you. <laughs> we can arrange something. I'll have your like. people talk to my people. <laughs> I'll have my people talk to your people. So we'll we'll work something out there. Um, and, and, but we also the, the youth orchestra will be joined by the Schomburg Youth Choir, which is now in its second full season, uh, and they've taken off. And and we are getting. The the youth choir is being invited to perform at, for at the Renaissance really? Hotel and Convention really? Center everywhere. Yeah, and it's so they're they're actually in high demand, uh, and I'm glad they're finding out about us. Um, but we've they've performed.
performed at the Shamrock Boomers game, uh, at the Renaissance for for a number for a couple of uh, events. Uh, what what a what a great young ensemble of music musicians that we have, you know. Uh, so they're going to be performing with the youth orchestra uh, at this concert. Uh, they'll be doing pieces on their own. They might do a piece or two with the orchestra. It is it is holidays like you've never seen them. It's all over the place in this concert, you know. And then we also like to do a little bit of... Um, a little spoofing going on, too. A little spoofing too. going on in between the numbers. We like to have a little fun, just to kind of just kind of loosen the, the, the mood a little bit and, and let people know that, you know, it's the holidays are a time to have fun. And You're going to have a shark relax. coming through? Um, it could happen. <laughs> we're working with the creative team right now to see what we're going to do with that. Oh, yes, oh, yes. <laughs> Of course, you're very familiar with the Presto Holiday Concerts, having been involved with it yourself. Oh, yes. On stage. Oh, yes. My stage career began and ended. <laughs> <laughs> it blossomed. It blossomed. It blossomed ah, with the youth blossomed. orchestra. Yes, so, yes. Uh, and, then, and then, you know, Joe, Joe Momquist, who's the director of the program, he's... Um, you know he's been he's been directing it since since the year one 1989, uh, and and he's really seen the program. I, I mean, really to his credit, he teaches too, doesn't he? He uh, up until last year, he's now a retired uh, tight teacher, so he's got a lot of fun free time on his hands. Yeah. So and and you know just time to to concentrate. And the youth orchestra is also a special guest at the Illinois Music Educators Conference in Peoria in January, which is a big thing. This is this is where all the high school. This is their all state. This is like the the the, the big you know uh, um, apex of of the, the summit of meeting between high school musicians where they have an all state orchestra of the best kids in the in the state playing in an orchestra. And the youth orchestra was was invited to perform at this conference. So in January we'll all be going down there. Uh, to, to perform kind of some of the best of classical music, so that's a, that's a really exciting thing for us. That's great. Uh, so you know, it's um, it, it's a great program. I've been involved with it since I started here. We we kind of started at the same time, more or less, and uh, it, it's it's just an honor to be to be a part of them. Okay, so you've got you've got the holiday concert. So the holiday concert is the nineteenth of of December. We have two performances at three thirty p.m. and seven thirty p.m. It's always a hot seller, so people should get their tickets. Sure. Um, they, they can do, go to prairiecenter.org and buy them. They can call us at uh, 847-895-3600 and, and, and buy tickets. And Nutcracker's when it, when, when and is Nutcracker it? opens on Friday, December 4th. There are five performances the first weekend, Friday, Saturday, Sunday. We have matinees. And then the second weekend, the 11th, 12th, and 13th, uh, for five more performances. And those sell fast, too, so people shouldn't wait to buy tickets for those. Uh, they're popular programs. Uh, they're time-tested. They're great. Yeah. Don't want to miss them. Well, I'm not going to miss them. I, I've, I've got my season tickets. You got your season tickets. So, and and it's and they're great family shows. You know, particularly the Nutcracker. You know, a lot of times I remember as a kid having to go to the Nutcracker, and and, and I was bored out of my skull. I'm sorry. It, this is the honest truth. I'm sorry. I have to say this. I've matured since then, <laughs> deeply. And. Um, <laughs> It's so different because we have narration, and it's a little different this year. We, we, we've changed things up uh, in this year's Nutcracker. The narrator, uh, Sarah Saperstein, who, who has performed here at the Prairie Center before, uh, she is going to be a, a bit of a storyteller. So I think young audiences who, who have, you know, need a little help understanding what the story is all about, she's there to tell them exactly what's going to happen. Uh, and, and it's a magical story, you know, young girl Clara who gets this Nutcracker doll that comes to life in a dream. and, and sends her on this journey to, to, you know, dancing, you know, reed pipes and, and sugar plum fairies and f waltzing flowers. It's, it's, it's really magical. Rob, so once again, thanks, thanks for having me. Thanks for being here. Great. That will do it for this edition of Speaking of Schomburg. Join us again next month for an all new episode. Until then, I'll see you around town.